Okay, so today I'm continuing my little mini-series where I'm doing red and black, and so for this basic whole expansion, I'll basically be playing as those two after suffering through, obviously, red and white, but I do like black and red quite a bit more. I like black's ability to sort of cuck their ability to play stuff, right? Maybe that's the only thing I would say. I'm not a big fan of all the creature destruction and stuff like that. I, I like more... You know, you take damage or you have to discard stuff when you play something or everything sort of comes at a cost. Although some of it even comes at a cost to you. So, like, I love that dinosaur that's, like, a three mana seven six or something that is able to, you know, be very well statted. But it's also, uh, let me reroll this one. It also makes you discard a card, but, you know, that's a fine price to pay for actually decent value. But so far, we're using it only as one deck combined and at some point i'll split them in two or again i'll just make two separate ones it doesn't mean it has to be this exact deck split in two but we actually got a chance to use this a little bit last time but this deck has actually done decently well maybe part of the fact is that it happens to be usable and historic but when i went to go make it i wasn't thinking about that and i didn't know that it would be i was actually making it to use it in timeless and so the point is that i was using whatever i wanted to use so it's not like I made a concession to make it usable and historic. I just happened to see that it was legal there. So then I, you know, it's kind of less competitive or whatever. So we'll just do that when we're able to. But yeah, we have pretty much equal number of lands and cards for each color. We don't have too many hybrid cards themselves. So even the deck, in fact, we have none. Uh, so even though the deck is a hybrid, it's not actually using any hybrid cards. Uh, when it enters, each opponent discards a card, so there's a lot of discarding from black, even some of it for me. There's a lot of dragons and flying for red, I mean, as you would expect. I always make fun of dragons' value because I don't, you know, exactly think it's very good. I mean, some of the ones that are decent are just very... Uh, I mean, either they're, either they're dragons or they mention dragons, but... Uh, yeah, like the only ones that are decent value, like four mana, four, four. Wow, it's a legendary or whatever. Most of them are, are very hard to come by or they're actually good value. This one, I don't even remember making it. So I might have just gotten it from either a draft or just from a pack. But yeah, some of these I've wasted wild cards on mythic and stuff. The one thing I really want for this to fit with the whole theme of like, Again, he I fell to Shadow and Flame, like a Balrog of Morgoth. Fucking, uh, those things fit with the whole red and black vibe. But the reality, why the fuck was blue check there? But the reality is that I need a mythic card for either one of them. And only one of them really seems like I would actually want it. This one just has to do with it. And it doesn't really seem even worth it. This guy's a 5 mana 7, 7. So when a legendary creature your opponent controls dies, put it on the bottom of the owner's library. Which, again, I don't like that. I'd rather it just be a 5 mana 7-7 seven, seven period. But um, this one seems a little awkward. It's 7 mana 7-5. Seven, one less for each permanent sacrifice this turn. Which, does that mean it would actively let you sacrifice any permanent that you want? Or you have to sacrifice it through some other effect probably? But yeah, this is pretty fun. Uh, I definitely like these colors more. I think I always say that I like black more aesthetically than I do mechanically but again i i like the cuckery of l let me look at some of the names of these cards actually since i never really acknowledge what they're called i just uh, i'll call it the cuck card but the one that basically lets you something anguish i think it's pretty high cost though painful quandary right whenever they cast a spell they lose five life or they discard a card so i like these type of mechanics that again prevent them from playing stuff even this is pretty fun loses three life unless they sacrifice an online permanent or discard a card and you can untap it if you have extra mana and just keep doing it over and over um so obviously like what what kind of stands out you're just making them discard stuff with black you're flying with red you are able to um have some of these that maybe don't have a clear rhyme or reason to them but you know whatever it's like the best that we have but again with most of my decks i'm not really going for like a particular synergy or win condition i'm going more so for a theme the both of these are kind of good value cards that are just uh coming at a bit of a cost some of this stuff just reduces the extreme over expensive nature of the dragons themselves that always triggers me uh invasion is fine this is uh discards two cards this one I don't even like, though. Each player discards two cards. Each player loses four life. Like, yes, it might be where it doesn't hurt you that much, but 
the fact that it applies to you is just annoying. This is obviously from the newest expansion, I'm pretty sure, because I just use it in the draft. Um, again, some of these are such shit value, like 4 mana 2, 3. Uh, some of the effects I don't really care about, right? I just care about, is it a dragon? Is it flying? That's all I want. Uh, this is the, some other shield dread. Menace, when it enters, each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature, Planeswalker. Exile it for 5, return it to the battlefield, transform under its owner's control. Uh, as obviously, each for each opponent, destroy up to one target creature they control. Each opponent discards three cards. And then that arrow makes it seem like it just skips to the second step. Like it's pointing to that, but it's just pointing to the card, obviously, overall. Uh, put all creature cards from graveyards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. That is kind of a busted fucking effect. Like, what is that shit, dude? Uh, okay, so that one's good. Again, some of these are just good value. 5 mana 5-5 five, five is fine with me. We have all four of the Sarkons in here. Uh, that one's okay. This is okay. Just discard. Uh, Herald of Anguish I specifically made actually for this just because I like the ongoing effect. So it's a 7 mana 5-5 five, five with flying, which is not very good. I don't care about the Improvise. I don't care about the Sacrifice and Artifact. None of that will come into play because I don't really have too much of that. But... At the beginning of your end step, each opponent discards a card. I like the idea of it sticking around and punishing punishing them with that effect. But then I don't care as much about the cost and the static and the other effects. But <laughs> probably not the best use of a mythic card. But I've made a lot of things like that that are not very good. So, again, a lot of those dragons are still sort of ugly value. That is not very appeasing to somebody who loves green so much. Like... You know, oh, I want a 5 mana 10-10. Or I want something like that. Or even just a one-to-one -one ratio, like a five mana five-five. But why should I have to go out of my way to reduce their cost to make that happen? Or why should I have to go out of my way to make a mythic card just because? Oh, that's the only value that you'll get is if it's a mythic card, it'll be that good, right? It'll it'll just be a one-to-one -one ratio. You could say, oh, you know, it should be a five mana four-four because flying counts as like one eight, effectively, or because of its other effect, it should be a five mana three-three. But again, I don't care about the other effect. I don't necessarily even care about flying, but I mean, you kind of take it for granted. So the only good dragon value is going to be when it's not flying. Yeah, people would always say that. Oh, we'll just use all these other cards that let you... Uh, that let you reduce their cost. But why should I have to go out of my way for that when I don't have to do it with anything else? Uh, and so I don't really have a lot of compelling black minions, though. Most of the minion stuff going on is going to be... Uh, most of the minions are going to be from dragons and flying and red. Most of the spells to cock their ability to do stuff or to destroy stuff or discard stuff is going to be from black. And so therefore we get to... This is actually amazing because now we draw right into something and get value from it. The actual... Um, I mean, I'll get that just because of the timing. That we're not going to be able to play the other one for a long time. And so what I like about this position is... Uh, or I like this because it counts as either land, right? It doesn't have to be a black land. Although I have to wonder why... You know, why would that be really hard for you to destroy? <laughs> right? That's not a very difficult thing to remove. So it's not something you should really even play this early. But I figured I should just do it anyway. Now, ah, uh, yes. With that thing played, now it feels worth it to... You know, play an actual fucking dragon. But it's so situational. It's so specific. What do I actually want... I'll get that one, I guess. So, we get the dinosaur. Or wait, why did we see the dinosaur on the top there? And now we don't. Wouldn't it stay like that? Yeah, I'm actually enjoying these de this deck way more than any of the other ones I was doing. Even though I like Hexproof and Blue for that reason. This I can just definitely get around. And maybe I'm enjoying bullying these people in Historic. Because I was always doing better here. Even though I'm still a Bronze. I was always doing better here than I was in Timeless. So maybe it isn't as bad, but people will still be using meta crazy stuff. It's just not quite as overpowered and over the top. I actually don't even care too much, though. Go ahead and do it. I'm the one who's going to beat you because of my impenetrable flying damage that I'm going to keep doing to your dumb ass. Especially when you have nothing to block with. Right, so now we go full with the flying. Or I would even be willing to do it with that guy just to get another dragon. 
Right, you think I'm, yeah, now I'm Kaiba Jr. for real. Not just because I like playing on the board and summoning big stuff and all, but also that I apparently like dragons, even though I really don't like the way they work in this game. But, uh, protection from demons, protection from dragons, how convenient. How fucking convenient. I don't think I've ever seen the card text in this game, protection from dragons, ever. You can go back through every episode I played. I've never seen that line. I don't think. I swear to God. And now I see protection from dragons. Like, are you fucking stupid, dude? What the fuck is that, dude? So, what do I do then? <laughs> what the fuck? That is incredible. In fact, that fits very well. Protection from demons and dragons, and that's exactly what I have with this deck. Because I'm obviously black and red, so this dude is hard countering me. Like, what do I do about something like that, though? I don't have any removal. I don't have anything else. I'm just fucked. This one costs a cast a spell. I have a very formidable board, to the point where they almost might not be able to do anything about it anyway, but... These buffs can get out of hand. Buffs are always a weakness of mine. Healing is always a weakness of mine. Uh, removal is always a weakness of mine. Flying is always a weakness of mine. I guess it wouldn't be now. Because when I, when I play as green, I'm not going to have the stuff to block with. So I always get triggered by it. But there's nothing I can actually do about that. Like, maybe I can't even block it. I forget. It should just be more that I can't damage it. I mean, you may as well do this. This is no use to you anyway. And then the cost might not matter as much. But I have a decent amount of land, so I don't know if I care about that too much. I kind of like the Warmonger's effects, though, because you have... Or actually, this... First Strike. Uh, this creature deals common damage before creatures without First Strike. Um, Or no, I mean, it doesn't have flying, so you wouldn't be able to do it anyway. Yeah, you can't even do it. You can't even do it. Okay, let me do the 4-4. That guy's not going to do much for me anyway, so I'm literally powerless before that. And <clears throat> so I have no choice but to try to just kill them, which I could almost do. So I have like 6 damage right there. Um, some of the 5-5. Five, five, again, so I can, I can block pretty much everything else. But let me guess. It's going to be protection from fucking... I don't know. I, I can't even explain what's happening. They're going to do the 5 for sure, so I can't actually even do this. I'm just too low. Discard a card. See, that is satisfying now. If the game drags out, but I'm just dead because that alone is going to kill me and there's nothing I can do about it. Right, like I'm literally powerless for... Like, look at that hard cut counter. What the fuck is... I've never seen that, I don't think. And it's so convenient that the two things in my deck are going to be dragons and fucking... I guess this thing isn't a dragon, but it would, or even that's not, but they're not flying, so. Everything else I can block and deal with pretty easily. In fact, I could almost do lethal, da well, it's the lifelink that fucks you over too. I could almost do lethal with this board if I just survive this and go face, but. That is utterly a cuck job card. And it wouldn't be nearly as good against mostly anything else, but. That is so fucking amazing, dude. I love it. There's nothing I can even do. You can't even block it as a dud. Like, it's one thing protected. Okay, let it be protected. So my damage will equate to zero. But it doesn't even let me fucking face tank. They can't even do anything. That's stupid. Like, that is so unbelievable, dude. What a convenient ass pull of a thing. Okay, I can still beat this clown, but... <laughs> That is pretty amazing, man. It's so specific. Why can't it just be like, okay, protection from red or, you know, in general. No, no, no. It has to be that exact fucking thing. So I'm still not worried, but I mean, this dude is a bit of a clown, so. I haven't had as much issue with lands with this deck, not to jinx it here, but you are in a very good spot. With respect to, you know, now, this is a great start, so if you just get a bunch of shit, a bunch of dragons you can actually play, um, you know, you're already, your cost is greatly reduced. Oh, I fuck. I was just looking at what I just drew, so I'm like, oh, I should play a black, but I forgot. Um, you can make them lose four life and discard a card. But a plus one, plus one. 
So I'm not unhappy with my board. I'm just more so confused by the simple fact of some of these effects like protections or just the invincibility, right? What is it called? Like when they're a god, like indestructible, it ends up being like you just can't do anything about it. Like a lot of the time or there'll be something very specific. It can be very annoying to deal with that. You can make them sacrifice both of those, which I almost don't want to do, but... Fuck it. I mean... Well, the discard I can't even afford to do. Fuck it, even though it hurts me too, you have no choice. Hit a 1-1 token as restitution. And I'm still a little short on land to be able to play this, and... But no, this would be fun in a game where, like, they use all their removal already, and now it drags out, and there's nothing they can do. Or something, but they would always be in top deck mode anyway. Like, they'd be playing what they'd get, so you'd never make them discard it. I can do it next turn, but we're, we're just gonna get clapped here, and I don't understand exactly why this guy's deck is so good. We were kind of clouding people a little bit in Historic last time. I don't know. Just trying to play this guy just to fucking play him because I wasted a Mythic card on it. See, sometimes people think you're being annoying, but I want to give him the proper chance to HPV me, but then he'll waste time and do something. Um... Okay. That one was a little bit deflating, especially that first game was fucking annoying as hell. So we're going to be looking at Sarkhan a lot here, but too bad they don't have the voice lines, even though they do have the voice lines. It's such a waste. They have the voice lines for the Planeswalkers, but they don't let you use those same voice lines as the emotes, like when you're saying hello and stuff. They, they could somehow fit certain ones in that would make sense for each of the lines. Or you have to probably buy some extra fucking cosmetic or benefit to be able to do that, but it just seems like a waste. It's one thing, okay, the game doesn't have voice acting, but it does. And there are a lot of Planeswalkers that do have that, but they didn't put in the work to the actual Planeswalker hero, effectively, your avatar. Alright, so that was the Battle of the Bronze, epic matchup, but now... Okay, that's a pretty bad hand that I'm not happy with. I don't need a lot of low-cost stuff, but I need some... Okay, we already lose. As you've been saying, oh, I don't get cucked on land too much, but... It's already over. I mean, I'm fucked. It's so fucking annoying, man. It's amazing how many of my decks that happens with, but the solution is simple. Just have like some sort of bunch of card draw, bunch of cycling, bunch of whatever uh, mechanics that I don't really like and don't want to use. I want it to be a little more just, you know, natural pace of the game, flow, playing on curve, just like normal stuff. <clears throat> but they can't let me have that. Everybody, everybody is like that in a try hard clown sense, like hindsight. It doesn't matter that, oh, you've played the game for 20 years and you're all cynical and you want to just do whatever. It's like when somebody's playing a game for the first time, they take totally the incorrect approach. Like Path of Exile was exactly like that. I'll always clown that community to some extent for that because it's like, it doesn't matter if you are so convinced of your, like, whatever. You're worried about the end game and the meta and this and that, but nobody wants to worry about that when they play the game for the first time, and that kind of beats it down to a, a very cynical zero-sum perspective, right? Don't force your jaded, cynical perspective of stuff on other people. Let them have their first experience, and then you will, uh, you know, they can get around to that later. But it turns into, like, an ego thing, like, oh, haha, ha, I played the game for 20 years, and it's, like, my whole life, and you want to make a big thing out of it. Discards two cards, reveals their hand. Yeah, just fuck it. Make them discard two cards. Yeah, target an opponent. Most of those effects are automatic. There's only one opponent. Like, what is this? A 2v2 team battle, tag battle? Like, fucking... Why do you have to have that option always? It's kind of annoying. I'm sure in the real world setting there might be things like that, but there should either be a mode like that in this game or the card tech shouldn't always fucking insist upon that. 
I wouldn't mind that myself. In fact, that's the one pet that I wanted so badly that is a, a dinosaur of some kind. I have a dinosaur card back, and I have a dinosaur even avatar. I, can, I love dinosaurs so much in this game, I could literally become one, but... We have three mana only, so we can do... You know what? That still is probably worth it, because... You know, it's going to help with this very cuck job cost of the... There's two forms of cuckery in this deck. One is where I cuck my opponent with some of the black cards, like Painful Quandary or whatever. But then some of it is I'm cucking myself with the with the cost of these annoying-ass dragons that you have. So that should be workable, but it's not. Because now it's the wrong color, even though you have the right amount. And now you can hit him with this. Or actually, now you'd be able to do it because of the treasure... The stupid treasure thing but again you shouldn't need all these cards to reduce their cost like this and the shaman you shouldn't need the token you shouldn't need all this other shit to work around just to get what should be pretty normal value anyway i'm like an entitled player based on green like oh green is so good value that you don't have to uh look at the top five cards for any number of permanents onto the battlefield and the rest in your hand well that is a very expensive card so i can't complain really wait so they couldn't do anything any number of permanent cards. So what were they? They're all just lands or some shit? Or I mean just all like removal spell type shit. They got kind of unlucky actually with that. Just for the simple fact that you have... Um, just for the fact that you could have probably done something more nasty with that. I'm surprised I don't see people using that Galta more considering how busted it is. Where you can just put like everything... Onto the fucking field just like that. The newer Galta. I didn't even get a chance to use it much myself. But no, I have like two card game finale things potentially coming up. I'll do PvZ Heroes like next month. Where I try to get to rank 50, right? That'll be my finale and if I fail to, I'll do my account. And either way, that series will probably end. Then after that, after this expansion, with next expansion, I can segue my way back to green and do the same thing, where I'm playing as green, and I have to get to Mythic that month. Again, for the first time I'm ever really trying, because I never play enough or whatever. So I have to get to Mythic with green that one month. And if I don't, I have to delete my collection, delete my account, whatever, and I'll be exiled to playing Magic Online. And even if I do it, I'll probably still move on and play Magic Online. So that could be like the finale for the series. But that will come in the next expansion, of course. So it won't be right away. This card's two cards, mill two cards, lose two life. As much as I like that idea, the board is a little concerning. But fuck it, let's just do it. Right, because they're going to beat my dumbass on the board. But you can sometimes still win here because you have... A certain amount of dragon flying shit that they maybe can't deal with. So some, some of this is not really good value though. You wouldn't really worry about it that way. But it might not matter to them that much. That's the thing. We got to just ignore the board for now. And you go like this. Create a treasure token. Oh, maybe I should have done it actually. Or we could do it next turn to try to... Oh, that is kind of a nice synergy. You could sacrifice that to give this guy double strike, and then it starts to become actually meaningful. Whenever you attack, you can sacrifice one or more. When you do that, that many target creatures gain double strike. So you're pretty much dead, because I could do it now, you know. I could do it twice now, but then again, nobody else really has flying in a meaningful way. What, what is this? Exile all creatures. Well, that's always fine. Man, why am I seeing some cards that like, I've never seen before? I've never seen that. That's actually kind of good, though. Like, now they're so cocked on the face on the board that they may very well have very little room to work with. And so now when this attacks, you get another one, too. And so therefore... Oh, look at look at the cuck job. Look at the cuck job. You got nothing. See, this is more satisfying to me. I, I guess I've never really done that too much in card games where I'm about milling or making them discard stuff. But I'm more about... Uh, I'm more about, like, trying to prevent them from playing stuff in the first place, like playing spells and all. I don't care what he does, it should be over. Good game, but not for you, because he's gonna do something crazy. What? Oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck. 
<laughs> I thought it was, dude. And I got the other one there, too. It doesn't mean that he necessarily wins, but... I got cucked on my land here. What the fuck, dude? I can't even block this shit. I wasn't even trying to BM. I just thought, okay, clearly you cleared the whole board and you're top decking and you have no plan, right? Because you've discarded stuff all the way in a way you can't control. Maybe I should have destroyed that, but I don't know how much it would have helped me. They made an insane recovery after being totally in fucking top deck mode. Even he wouldn't have known. How do you, how would he have known what he's going to get that would fucking... So, I like the little dragon here. Or dinosaur, of course. Don't insult the fucking dinosaur by calling it a dragon. Because they're always such shitty value. The, pr the price that they paid to evolve into having wings, like... Dinosaurs or wingless dragons, basically wingless birds or whatever um, You would look at it and say that Obviously, it's not worth the trade-off because you cost so much more for so much less value so That is perfect. Let's see what he deals with how he deals with it Target opponent reels their hand you choose an online card. They discard that card. See that's not really even worth it I don't even really like that now, you're kind of cucked and fucked with respect to the land again. So even though I was saying it's not been that bad, it's, it's not been that bad in terms of getting land. It's in terms of getting the right land, right? You just kind of can't do it. Like, I'm never going to get to play that shit anyway. But this is good for the haste, and you will get a dragon out of it as well. And so that's fine. doesn't even matter why. In fact, I prefer the lower cost one at this point. Now, they'll make a whole 100 to 0 comeback. Right, where, okay, now you don't get that easy fucking comeback. See, that's all it takes sometimes. That, this is why I did so well with the green decks. Like, yes, they might have win condition, removal, epic, you know, answer for every situation, but they're not always going to get it in time. So it's like, it's not even really aggro, although that almost felt like it. It's more just like, you summon good value stuff, and if they can't deal with it, they lose. Like, imagine that. Almost like that's how card games are originally designed to work in their earlier state. Which I've, again, been sort of robbed myself of of doing that with respect to, uh, you know, not having played this game in the past. Yeah, the cynical way that people treat games is amusing and the egotism in it is kind of unfounded to a certain extent that you have, um... Uh, let's see, there shouldn't be anything that matters too much. But see, now we're not going to be able to do... Oh, no, no, we will be able to do it. You have to manage these land colors a bit more than I'm used to doing because you typically... I typically don't play hybrid decks. In fact, I never play them. This guy's effect confused me a little bit at first, but basically, creature deals combat damage to a player. may pay one life if you do draw a card. But I somehow thought it meant for them, not for me. So, obviously, I can pay a life and draw a card, which is typically going to be pretty worth it. So we have a good amount of land here. We should have a little more red. And we have this. Uh, discard two cards. I don't care which one, really. I wouldn't really even know super well what to get rid of, but... See, even though you might say, Oh, I should like stuff like that because I like preventing them from playing spells. I don't like it in an activatable sense. I like it more in a constant sense. Like, it's just all your like the orb that we saw in magic online like all your spells cost one more for the rest of the game or every time you cast a spell you got to pay five life or discard a card like that so we have wait why can't i do it though what oh no it's six not five okay that's fine menace if they took damage this turn which they haven't counter target spell amazing fun and interactive game by the way even though I'm talking about cucking them from playing stuff, but... <laughs> yeah, maybe it's more of a hard commit. It is ironic that I would say that, but I, I guess I hate removal more than anything. So this is going to be... I never get up to the 9 effect. Deal 4 damage, okay. Deal 1 damage to the opponent for each, whatever. Doesn't really matter, we're just doing that for the count. We get it to 9. 
Push your line for any number of dragon creatures card, put them on the battlefield and shovel. So pretty much you fucking win the game. It may as well just say that. Like, obviously, when you have as many dragons as I do, like, that that's such an insane effect. But you would think they would stop it before I get to that point. And, of course, I have one of each of the Sarkhans actually in there. And now we're getting that effect, too. So it's all coming together. Now, that shouldn't replace the other one, right? I always forget because I don't often play stuff like that. So now we're, we're really getting somewhere. Discard a card. <laughs> Again, it's just sort of random. There's no real synergy between the two, but it's just black is going to be hard committing to discarding and, and sort of trying to prevent them from playing stuff. So we're already there, and then we get... Uh, may draw a card if you do discard a card. Or I mean, whatever, the opposite of what I just said. Now, the only thing you got to think about is we're getting the five fives of return, and we're about to do this shit. So I'd love to see it play out, and then in before they just do that same thing they did last game, uh, whatever, with the little girl's picture, that would clear the board. Destroy all creatures. Invoke justice. You should almost slow pace them a little bit and not just do it. But target an opponent, okay. You choose a card, they discard. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This exile all creatures. Now, this will actually be relevant because that's exactly, yeah. Say farewell to farewell. Um, bruh. Now, he's actually gonna die. He sacrificed himself to you. What is this shit, dude? This is like the world tree type of fucking mechanic. Oh my god, I can't even fucking do this without scrolling over it. Or I'll end up milling out and decking out because of this. Or at least it organizes them in some sort of way like that. But yeah, just do the one where you get to... Choose any target. Deal one for every dragon that you have, basically. It doesn't matter. You got way too much shit to even worry about all this. Sacrifice, double strike. Like, I don't even care. I don't care. Ta target up to one creature. Gains double strike. That one, fine. Go ahead. Like, what are, you, what are you gonna fucking do, dude? Even just with the haste first strike shit alone, or whatever I was already able to attack, it's just way too much for you to deal with. I'd love to see you win this game. I'd love to see you deal with this. Like, what the fuck? For all the weird luck kind of moments and everything, so you're already gonna take, like, fucking that. Or no, you're already dead. I was gonna say, why not block that? Because that is like a world tree caliber moment, like where it summon every god card from your deck. But again, how often do you really get to use that effect? Right, where Sarkhan lasts that long, it's not typically gonna happen. But it does kind of reward you for board control. So, as far as planeswalkers, I never really used any as green. I didn't use any with white and blue. So, I don't really use them much at all. Sarkhan's like the only one that I've used. And I don't always use Sarkhan, but when I do, I use like all fucking four of them in the same deck just because of that whole thing like where I I saw somebody using it like a long time ago and then I was like, oh, after that game, right, I feel like using him. So I look him up or whatever and then I craft the first one I see. But then I realize, oh, that was the wrong one. There's actually four of them. So how was I supposed to know that? So then I said, fuck it. I was salty about crafting the wrong one and wasting a card on, wild card on it. So then I say, okay, I'll just make all four of them. So then I said, fuck it and just use it. And it's like a little Exodia Sarkhan thing where I have my own internal win condition. If I can play all four of them at the same time on the field, I should just auto win the game. Or like I would treat it as like, oh, I have to do that. Otherwise, it doesn't count as a win, even if I do win on other in other ways. But it's like my own little internal win condition that I set. That was an interesting set, at least. And... I was talking a little shit, I guess, by saying good game early, but I didn't realize it would reverse that quickly. I hate these spaces in the name. Like, what kind of shit is that? Okay, that you can't really do. It's dangerous to do it with only two land. I I'm not too happy about it, actually. Uh, that's probably not going to happen. But no, some of the Planeswalkers are ironically statted. Like, the one that only costs three has, like, a high-cost effect that you can do with it. Right? Like, once you get up to seven or something. And then one of the ones that costs, like, five, right? One of the more expensive ones, it, or, like, the sixth one, doesn't have a high-cost thing to do. Right? It, the highest thing it has is, like, a minus three. So you would think they would be almost designed the opposite of that, but... 
Yeah, blue has some of the most annoying cards in the game and the sort of, sort of play style that I just don't like. So there's nothing I can really say that I like about it besides Hexproof. But in a weird way, you would think I would almost like that. Like, I'll make a deck that counters everything. That counters uh, every spell that they do. But, yeah, not in an activatable sense. I'm just too lazy to do that. That's why I don't like it. But no, like, are people actually using fun gimmick decks here? Or are they actually using meta stuff? Because I wouldn't even really be able to tell. But still, historic and timeless, you get a lot more variety nonetheless. Right, so at least we're doing better here whether because this deck is better than we, what we typically use or like what i was using with blue and white was so shitty whether it be because of that or whether it be because we're actually in historic i don't know but whatever it's, it's a fun diversion i totally didn't intend for it beginning of your upkeep gain two life uh don't do the life gain shit dude uh. so how many do you have shrine wait we got somebody who believes in astrology over here with all the constellations as i always memed on um one of my favorite lines from my debate format that i ever said was like this kind of sums up the logical razors and things that i would use right my sort of short form to the point way of shutting down certain arguments and stuff it was uh imagine blaming celestial objects for your personal problems is basically the way to sum up and meme on astrology Right, of all the things that could have impact, you're really going to blame that. Or yeah, like in the political compass test, it says uh, celestial objects can tell you many things. Yes, it can tell you many things about space and the universe, not about your own fucking little random shit life that you want to have all these horoscopes and stuff. Yeah, menace on there. And maybe you can... I always forget how that works with the sequences of like the battle phase and stuff. You could attack first and then summon it, I guess, before you end your turn. Therefore, they would have taken damage and it would have done that effect, right? I think I keep misplaying that. This game doesn't have like traditional battle phases the way that I'm used to in other games. Or even Hearthstone is like that. There really are no phases. You just kind of do whatever the fuck you want, right? Yu-Gi-Oh has very set fixed phases uh, Even PvZ Heroes I guess has that where um, You know, it'll be the trick phase this and that Mythos of Brakos If water and black was spent to cast a spell search your library for a card shuffle Also something to do with the constellation I guess in there. I can't really tell what the fuck that is Behold the multiverse. No thanks. I'm not a big fan of fucking Gibbity Toilet or the superhero shit, both of which would be in multiverse category. W what does a multiverse mean? It just means when you've milked a fucking franchise for too long that you have to keep expanding it on and on in ways that people don't even want. So I have four mana and this is down to five. Now, why is it down to five? Because of this, obviously. You can still keep blocking that dumbass. Why wouldn't you attack with that, though? I could block either one, but it's not like I can kill it. This would be kind of fun to do, but actually let's not because... Let me try to empty out my hand at least first. Make them discard something. And again, it's, it's not really as efficient though as I would like. Like, what is the point in playing that, you know, just to try to discard something? Uh, can't be blocked except by two or more. Okay. There's something that was like, can't be blocked by three or more. Right, I forget what that effect is called. Very few things actually have it, but we saw it at some point. See, I play the game on such a in such a fresh way that people act like everything. I, I hate that whole effect of what people do. They'll act like, oh, because something is known by the internet or borrowed knowledge or collectively, doesn't mean that you know it yourself or that it, you wouldn't take a lifetime to figure it out. That's what chess and games like that will teach you. You can make fun of chess or checkers all you want. But like, if you were to try to figure it out yourself without using an engine, without using a reading books and studying, it would take you a century to figure out anything with it, right? It would still be very, very long winded. And so the point is that you have, what is that? Oh, that counts as like an artifact. Okay. Um, I'm discovering synergies that I didn't even know I had in here, but the point is that you're able to do it in such a way that <coughs> 
again, just because the knowledge exists out there doesn't mean it wouldn't take you a long time to figure it out. So that's the whole fun. You want to go in blind. You want to figure it out. You want to struggle. You want to make mistakes. You want all that to be the case. And so therefore you have... Um, beginning of your upkeep search for library, shrine card if you do. Six or more shrines. Ability, ability triggers additional time. Um... No, no, not the world tree, dude. Not the world tree. Although I just had my own little world tree fantasy the last game because of being able to play that shit in such an epic way with Sarkhan. Khan. I don't know if that's the first time I've done that, but it's probably the best time I've done it because you get to... Wait, does that mean what I think it means? Uh, deals common damage to player, each player discards it. Maybe I will do that because it might cuck whatever plan they have going. This is, uh, what is it? Creature gets minus two. I don't even care about that. You go ahead. You can't do anything with flying. <laughs> Although their healing could be a little bit annoying. Like they'll have this perfect combo in their hand and then I'll make them. But then again, giving them seven cards could be really dangerous. Yeah, the world tree. I have PTSD. Just mitigate the damage. Like my old expression, but... You know, they fucking fill up their whole board, and that's the moment that I discovered that you could have more than a fixed number of things on the board. Right? It was around when I first started playing the game that, oh, you can just, like, it, it looks like it could only fit maybe one or two more minions, right? Then my board is full. Like, in Hearthstone, you can have whatever, right? A fixed number. But, oh, no, it just keeps shrinking them down. To, to, it expands to almost any size and just, you know, you're fucked. You can't even comprehend without doing it. I would exchange your hand in the library, then shuffle. You get a maximum hand size emblem with no maximum hand size. Okay, they played a lot of shit this turn. I don't know if I should really even do this because as much as I like, you know, they, they have so little in their hand that it's only going to help them. I don't know, this is kind of fucked up. I'm probably going to lose because they've just got way too much shit going. Even though I have a good board, it's not going to matter in the end. But just in my lust to do as much damage as I can, I'll do this, but... It's like they're healing for too fucking much. All the mechanics that trigger me. Flying, healing... At least he's never going to get to the fucking 10 point, but the, look how long this turn is. This is one of those meta <coughs> fucking... Annoying ass turns. They have seven cards in their hand, which is not a good idea to do that, but I don't mind even losing some of these things. Okay, come on. I mean, I'd be doing it for my own benefit too, but it really seems dangerous to give a deck like what we're going as. I'll do it just because, but. You know, what you're going to make them discard is not going to be as valuable as what they get. Like, I should play all this shit before. Reel their hand. It doesn't matter, though. Like, when enters each opponent, discards a card. Like, why do I care? When it deals common damage, which they're not going to be able to prevent because they seem to have the weakness of flying, or maybe they'll get rid of it. But, again, it's going to help them, too. Oh, you'd really want that one to be tabbed? Why does that matter? Okay, okay, dude. Okay. I give up. I mean, I can't. Just the pace of this game tells you I'm not going to win. Right? I can just tell you right now. I'll be in my they have too much health. It's gone on too long. They're not going to be able to... I'm not going to be able to deal with all this shit that they have. Like, fuck it. This is not the kind of pace that favors me. But they can just keep tapping shit like that every single turn and they have enough land with which to be able to do it. This creature's power toughness is equal to twice the number of cards in your hand, which that's not going to be very good because most of your hand is going to be... Um, I don't even know what's happening, but okay. It doesn't even feel like they win necessarily right now. Or maybe they do. We can have your main phase. Like, they have too much shit that I don't even care. Like, it's just too much. You gotta end it a little bit quicker, is at least what I've learned from this. Well, now this effect could be pretty good. Literally losing to a dog illusion over here. 
Okay, hurry up. You don't need to do all this shit, dude. Or what? They strategically left me at one health just for the meme aspect of it. This is where I hate conceding, but I also... Come on, just do it. I don't care. I won't even block. <clears throat> Hurry up, dude. It's the best of three, especially. So don't bloviate too much about one game. Like, yeah, you better milk this one the best you can because you're not going to win then. In fact, I would have died even if I did try to block. No, I guess I could have dragged it out, but whatever. When, when the pace of the game goes like that, you know you're not going to win. You know, my mid-range commitment is pretty clear even with this. As much as I do that as green... We can still win two in a row like we did in the in the last set where that guy was so fucking cocky and stuff Or I guess I was cocky and then I lose but then I still come back So I'll keep it, but I'm not too happy about it <coughs> Where you either want it's not even that I want more land it's that I want lower cost stuff Some people just make this fucking so boring like let me just fucking do it man This is the downside of the best of three I don't care even if I lose but look how long every fucking step takes just play the fucking game dude Right like that, that's what my style is like more at least right now like I'm not trying to do anything Super long-winded and even in the long term. That's still my preference. I like more mid-range type stuff, but You're just fucking annoying every step of the way you got to be slow Like there's that what what advanced level plays are you really making there that would have nothing to do with my deck because there's nothing in my deck that counters any of what you're doing right my only chance is to like rush you down quickly like that fucking one dude that we saw the rotting whatever the fuck it is the dinosaur right where we just rush that guy down so quickly because he just can't deal with it which i love those type of moments Bro, bro, I guess this will be the last set that I play because you're just going to take all fucking day with this shit. It's like when Trump gets triggered by, not that, that Trump, but the Trump from Hearthstone gets triggered by somebody taking forever on like their first turn. He's like doing all these histrionics. Discards that card. I don't even know what is going to matter. I don't even know. How would I fucking figure out? <clears throat> this person's deck is filled with so many fucking convoluted bullshit cards that... Draw a card, fine with me, I don't care. Burger's Lantern, let's just keep making them do this shit right away. And I'll just keep doing that effect, untap it every turn, so you have to do this twice, so... Again, do they really care about their health when they're going to have so much healing? And the answer is apparently not. And so this is where I end up burning out of cards too because I'm not going to have any card draw either. So it doesn't matter about making them discard stuff. But no, I could do that presumably twice now every turn, even though it is expensive. If they're really going to play this sort of slow-paced, annoying thing. Maybe I should have made them discard that, but... I do like this. Somebody did suggest this one and the other one, Painful Quandary on one of my videos so i won't act like oh i came up with that myself but i mean just by looking through the cards i would have seen that i like it and, and i wasn't playing as black anyway so it, i guess it doesn't matter but or you know what i wasn't playing as black but then i think i put it into my green deck the same way that i have like some of the hexproof cards and stuff in there right so even if i'm playing as green i would use that just because i have the carotid and stuff to do uh you know whatever you know, I have a real chance of winning this, but I'm not going to because draw X cards, like, that's going to fuck me over. I should have gotten rid of that. <clears throat> you know, it gets to the point in the game where it feels like they can just do whatever they want because they... Somebody else uses a shrine deck against me. I think Davey or somebody would uh, sometimes do that. Okay, so we just keep summoning shit. We do that. I should have almost done it twice there, but you're almost dead regardless. Discard a card, gains indestructible time, return tab if there are four more creatures in your graveyard, transform. So let me guess, they're gonna make a z zero to a hundred Yu-Gi-Oh turn fucking all around play and just win the game right now. Like, I hate this move. This is the typical Magic the Gathering move, whether it be because of card blow, power creep, whatever. 
Like, I'm not saying they shouldn't have a chance to do something here, but it'll it'll be too drastic of a play, right? They're just gonna win the game right now. I give up. Right, where whatever amount of board control and stuff that I have is completely meaningless. Just because you're gonna do whatever the fuck you want. I swear, that happens in this game more than any other game that I've ever seen, where they'll make this crazy single turn play where it seems like they have nothing going for them. At least here they have a couple shrines down, but it seems like you should probably lose. Target creature, let's do that. Wait, what? Oh, I, I don't know what I did. Fucking, okay, I misclicked that. But by which logic I could have done both then, or at least I could have summoned that. That is basically what I was trying to do. Well, presumably they don't have an answer for what I'm going to do, but their slow pace of play makes me just not even want to do this. Like, I don't care even if I win. Like, they're so fucking annoying. Every little interaction they have to take an hour to do. Like, why is this so complicated for them to figure out? I don't care. Go ahead. You win. I don't care. Fucking, you're just annoying to play against. I don't want to play against you. Like, fuck you. Just do whatever you want, man. This shrine meta cohesive fucking dog shit that you're trying to do. So I could play Trigger's Lantern twice, or if Sarkhan could deal damage to the face, I would be fine with that. I do like the Shivan Dragon thing too. Wait, let me make sure I do it the correct way, because at least they're gonna have to discard both cards from their hand and then they'll get to... And I'm not even trying to BM, I just don't know. They'll have some dumb shit that they can still do. Transform it into what? I don't care. I'll do this, then I'll do it again. Then I'll attack you with this shit. And if that's still not enough, I just quit the game because you're fucking annoying. Bro, this is not a tournament. This is not a fucking big deal, dude. This is just a random fucking ranked game against a clown, a bronze clown. Bro is treating this like it's the biggest moment of their life. Bro is treating it like it's a 1700 rated chess game when I'm playing, but at least I have some permadeath and other considerations with it. Dude, I'm really dissatisfied with this. I, I guess this is the sort of thing you get triggered by when you have a very little amount of time. Like, I have an hour a week that I play this game, and I spend the whole hour looking at this fucking person's avatar. So it's fine. Maybe that, again, that's why you shouldn't do best of three, but I tend to like best of three. It can be pretty fun because, again, you have these epic comebacks where you lose a game, but then you balance <coughs> out the RNG and stuff like that. <coughs> sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. I mean, you do have plenty of those to sacrifice. In fact, I think you're still not dead despite my... All my ranting, you're apparently still not dead. I guess that's not what's so good about it because you could just sacrifice a bunch of shit. Okay, okay, dude. You can have it, man. I, I I, would rather lose this game. This is so fucking stupid, man. You can just tell the kind of... Like, why are you at gold? Go, go to Mythic and go fucking try hard. And first of all, why is a bronze player playing in gold? But that happens all the time because the matchmaking is a little less precise when you have... Uh, when you have best of three because I guess not as many people play it or whatever and there's so many instances where I beat people much higher ranked than me but I can guarantee you that even if we win this one I'll lose the next game so I don't care but, but let's just stay here all day man I'm, I'm fine with that uh, discard a card maybe we'll start doing the Shivan dragon stuff just because I don't even care. Like I'm, I'm just totally out of it. I, I don't want to play this anymore. This is, we're gonna sit here for like a fucking century trying to make this happen, and I just can't do anything. Like they always have an answer for everything. They can just do whatever they want. Maybe I could have done that to do a double strike, and I would have won. But I don't care. Like it's just you're not meant. This person is not meant to lose the game. 
they have paid their dues they have built built their deck they have done what they wanted to do they deserve to win because they built their deck good for them fuck it man it's so irritating If only this was a Sarkhan that could deal damage to the face. I'm almost doing it like a self troll. Like, I, I don't want to win this game, but... Like, the amount of time that you're giving them, they're going to be able to do something now, surely. It's just... Oh my god. It's not like I have a way to destroy those either. I guess you sort of pseudo can by... By doing this, and then it basically forces them to, but... Ugh. Like, they'll have to give one up. What do we even get from the thing? Deals three damage to target creature. They don't summon creatures though. I mean, it's a, it's a gimmick in itself. Like, oh, just make a deck with only shrines, but it's obviously more than just that. I, I should like fucking block this person. So uh, can you do that? Like you block somebody and then you don't get matched up, up against them again, but then you can kind of game the system like Kramnik in chess where I'll just ban everybody who's a good player. So then I'll... You know, I'll only get to play weaker players than I'm the best player now since I banned everybody else, but go ahead, man. Go ahead. Just <laughs> You've unleashed my fury. <clears throat> Just do whatever you want. I, I can't beat you. It's it's objectively impossible for me to beat you in the game. It cannot happen. But let's just sit here and, and let it play out anyway. Oh my god. Okay, even that I don't care. I mean, I can just play it right back out. I've never really played her as the creature itself. We won't be able to untap it. <clears throat> or no, I will be able to untap it. I mean, it's a nice effort to try to return it, but... You'll have to get rid of at least two shrines. Or no, you don't. You can tank it once. Like, th this is a mathematical troll. I maybe missed some option that I could have done, but... You know, you could tell I'm just dejected, so that's a good meta strategy, like... You know, tire your opponent out and just piss them off and just do whatever you can, you know. Get a Shivan Dragon, which I guess I could immediately play it too. But we already know what's gonna happen, dude. We already know. These cards are kind of cancer, like the amount of ongoing value you get, but I mean, I guess that's the point. But it's okay. I'm not going to win. I, I know somehow I'm not going to win. It's just amazing that it's taking them this long to do something. You got plenty of land. You got your shrines. Just do whatever you want. Holy shit. So now... I could do the Turgrid's Lantern thing again. Maybe I should just summon the fucking thing. Just summon, summon the Shivan Dragon and just deal with it because you're going to have an answer for it, but I don't care. Untap. Okay, okay, dude. Or no, no, no. That actually saved me because now I can do it twice. With the... Wait, how? Oh, because I have two of those. So if we untap it and we hit you in the face, it's still not going to be enough, but you might have to give up the shrines. So now we'll untap it. I actually got saved by the fact that I have to do that to do it. But I, I keep thinking I can't even do it. That's why I assume the only one I'm clicking on is, you know, the only interaction I should have. The pace of this game will just make you never want to play this shit again, dude. Holy shit. It shows you my deck is bad. That even when you're in such a winning position, you don't win. But it's just fine. I don't even believe your good game. I don't even care. Like, this is what it takes. This is like a time warp thing. The one time out of a million that you beat time warp, everything has to go exactly your way and they have to misplay and it just shows you, yeah, yeah, fuck you. You sit there for literally an hour and now guess what? We're gonna do it all over again. I can 100% guarantee you we're not gonna win, but what you would really do with this is I should put like four copies of the same card in there that are, you know, like that one dinosaur. Right, and just commit to that. So even though it's the same idea that you're combining black and red, what I also try to do on top of that <clears throat> is I try to put too much variety. So I'll put one of each copy of each card instead of, you know, one thing. So it's like the angry video game nerd thing where he, he gets pissed in Ghostbusters. There's no pause button. 
I got a shit stain in my pants and an answering message on my machine saying, sorry, I'm playing Go Ghostbusters 2 on NES. Like, I, I'm playing an online game, so I can't fucking get up to use the bathroom or do anything. Even though I easily could. I could go take a shower. I could go fucking get some food to eat, come back, eat it, take a shit. I could do whatever I want because this clown person is never going to do anything in their life. And they take that long in one single move. <clears throat> so whatever. This is the final boss of Historic. And apparently... This is exactly what it is, like the try-hard bottom feeder effect, where it's like you're you're a 1500 chess player and you've studied openings your whole life, and your dad is a grandmaster, and you're a try-hard thing, but you're not even good. That's the thing. You're not even good. I'm not even good, but at least I'm not, you know, pretending like I am. Although sometimes I do kind of say that, but I but the ways that I am is maybe in like something more basic, like okay, if I calculate or whatever, if it's a slower format. Like, there are things that anybody could theoretically do. Do you want another red? Because everything you have here is going to be requiring that. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile top two cards of your library. You may play them this turn. If you exile the card, you create a 3-1. Exile the land card, create a 3-1 dinosaur token. If you exile the dinosaur token, create a treasure token. You got to read Yu-Gi-Oh! card text like that, like an auctioneer, because some of them go on for so long. If you have this Amazon archetype, then you get another thing from this archetype. Like, it becomes very insular and annoying. Even as much as you might look at it on a surface level and say, well, it's, uh, that means it's complicated. That means it's, you know, intricate and nuanced, which to some extent, yes, but it's not really always a good thing. Like, look at the turn, turn time to the, like, a Yu Gi Oh thing, like with the synchro summoning and stuff. They spend an hour playing in the game. I spend like five minutes playing because my plays are to the point. So you just sit there and, and just watch. I'm not saying you can't play control decks and stuff, but man, and especially early on in the game, like nothing's even happened yet. You should at least have to work towards it a little bit. That's the same one we got from that guy the last time, which is perfect given the stage in the game because we can't play the higher cost stuff anyway. Right, this guy would be beautiful to have. Right, so we, we could overwhelm them, beat them on the board, but I can almost guarantee we're not going to, but that's also a very good effect to keep our hand fresh. So we're in a very good board position, and then I haven't played any of their fucking dinky shrines yet. Right. But they have a way to definitely do a major reversal. So you summon the 3-1... You can play this anyway, and then you can also play- you may as well. You may as well. You should just basically be pretty much dead here anyway. I don't give a fuck, dude. I don't give a fuck. Your best chance that you have to beat some of these better decks is to do- wow, they didn't put out much resistance there. What a fucking clown. Your best chance is to play it sort of more aggro. Not even because that's how I build my decks. I build them more mid-range, whatever. Sometimes even people think I have a control ideation because I always say, oh, you have the bigger minions and, you know, you want to summon big stuff. But I also don't want the game to drag out too long. So it ends up being a case where you have... Uh, I'm not even satisfied by that because of how long they took and how much that pissed me off. But no, it's like... It's mid-range, but you gotta still wrap it up quickly because your deck or cards aren't gonna be the greatest always, right? Like, if the game drags out, you know they're gonna just beat you on raw value alone because they're just using something better. Okay, see you tomorrow.